The question is like, how do you start a business at a young age when people don't take you seriously? What you're fearing technically hasn't happened yet. I actually have been thinking a lot about the TikTok creator fun, and I'm wondering if no, any, like, no, like, no, no, no. Analytics won't tell you that what consumers want is authenticity and connection, not just another fucking factor shit. Oh, hey there. You know what time it is? It's Ask Jade Showtime, where I answer your deepest, darkest questions about social media. All right, I already had so much coffee. I had this cup of coffee, and now I'm on to this one. All right, let's go for the first caller. The first call we have is Charlie. Someone's name is legitimately Charlie Brown. I don't believe this. This is not real. Hey, this is Jade, you're on the Ask Jade Show. Are you Charlie Brown? Yes, I am. Wait, that's your name? Yeah. No way. Well, uh, 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 no. Oh. That sounds so disappointed. I feel my betrayed. Name actually, my name's actually Candles, but it's like my preferred name is Charlie. Oh, okay. It was my name. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, what is your question, Charlie Brown? I'm just going to call you that because that's super fun. Okay, cool. Would you have any advice about like how you could try to to therapy as a young person when there's like this idea like young people not start a business yeah so like the question is like how do you start a business at a young age when people don't take you seriously yeah well i already have my business established i'm just worried about like going about things yeah and like people not taking me seriously because i'm only 20. what is your business if i may ask it's an environmental consultancy business so basically helping other like household and businesses become more environmentally like conscious and sustainable okay epic oh my god who are the people you talk to i'm assuming business owners so they are older yeah and then also like household owners so have you actually received pushback of someone saying you're so young you don't know shit no so what's your worry just being called yeah. out it's just like really intimidating mm. because like I, I just know you're gonna get those adults out there yeah I yeah. mean, so first of all, the fear you have, you have to picture it. It's like someone saying, Charlie Brown doesn't know anything. Or Charlie Brown, why would I listen to you? That sounds actually really fun. I would love to say that name over and over again. But the issue yeah. is what you're fearing technically hasn't happened yet. Typically what you're afraid about is not about what will happen in the future. It's about something that happened in the past. There's this like book called The School of Life, which basically breaks down that fear. All fear and worrying is, is typically something that happened in your past or childhood that's just reminding you of this current situation. So I'm not gonna go into this deep psychology thing because I'm not a licensed therapist, but you know, I always yeah. feared about not knowing everything because let's just say maybe in my younger childhood, my maybe my dad, you know, he never really trusted my opinion or something. And then I was now navigating my business role with that weight on my shoulder. So understand what you're fearing is not really real because you told me it hasn't happened yet technically, right? But say it yeah. does, say someone doesn't trust you. Now this is how you should navigate any business. First of all, I mean, honestly, in your industry, environmental sustainability, you have an upper hand. Like a lot of youth controls that narrative because the only people that care about the earth is people that live on it the longest, right? Because someone that yeah. doesn't doesn't have a lot to live, like they don't really care about what's going to happen in the next 20, 100 years. Your youth actually plays in a benefit. But if I would say the last piece of advice is you have to understand that no one really knows what they're doing. Like I, every day I'm like, wow, someone one day is going to call me out and call me a fraud. Or one day someone's going to, you know, tell me I'm an imposter. And these are very normal emotions. Yeah. So I think we should normalize this more and understand that like, it's totally okay to feel these things and everybody feels them. That makes sense. If someone ever dares to rebuttal Charlie Brown, you can be like, hey, I know I'm younger and this is a, you know, this is an interesting conversation, but one of my interesting, you know, perspectives is I will live here longer and I will understand more long-term effects. So this is what I've done in my research. And I think that yeah. take that energy to your studies that could be a part of your marketing. And I really believe in you. So I would definitely keep it up. I love what you're doing. Oh, thank you so much. I will. And then my second yeah. quick question was, I was just wondering as a business owner, I get home a lot to like steer away from like politics and having like a political opinion as a company so what would you have to say about picking like a political stance as a company how do you not be too controversial to 
your customers, but also stick up for what you believe in. And honestly, I haven't mastered it completely because every day I get yelled at. I've, I mean, I voted for Biden this year. I believe in purpose and human rights over profits. It's just really self-conceited yeah. sometimes, but you know, I do get bash lacks, so I'm not perfect at it, but this is what I have to say. You know, a company is not a person. If you're the founder of it, you can take a political stance and have it not, not reflect, you know, the entity. It's about that separation. Yeah. Like if you're posting on your LinkedIn, on the company account, certain things, then okay, yeah, maybe you're going to get that pushback. But I, I find that if you're taking a personal point of view and you're not enforcing it on our company, oh, you yeah. can separate it. Second of all, and I'm aware about this, I am the founder of my company. So even if I separate it, I will lose people that know my company and me. And I have to be okay with it because I have to understand my goal is not to make money. I don't want to make a billion dollar company. At my agency, I kind of decided that, okay, I only kind of want to work with brands that align with my values. So when it comes to you, Charlie, like, do you think that that's important to you to stay vocal upon? Like, what are you trying to build? Personally, for me, I would rather pick like the humane side of it over profits and it makes sense for you you are a sustainable company it actually might benefit you again this is where it comes to perspective you might look at your young age and like oh frick like this is gonna be bad for my company but i'm saying hey charlie this is good because you have an advantage with your age and now i'm gonna say this i think with your politically like you're not trying to shove it on people's throats but just sharing what you believe in will help your company because naturally people that care about sustainable things care more about human rights because we're there's more empathy evolved, right? There's just more human emotion yeah. involved. So I think it will help you. Obviously, my number one goal is to never be too arrogant with any side and always just hear both sides. But I will say my mind if I'm really involved and believe in something. So I encourage you to do the same. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you, Charlie Brown. It was great chatting with you. You too. Have a great day. Bye. Oh! love Charlie Brown. Does anyone watch Charlie Brown though as a show? I feel like that was such a vibe. Okay, let's go to the next scene. Hello, Eliza, you're on the Ask Jade show. Yay! Oh my gosh, thank you so much for calling. I've watched your videos for years and your advice has helped me so much. Oh my gosh, thank you so much. What's your question today, Eliza? How can I help? So today I want to talk to you a little bit about TikTok. For a little backstory, I'm a musician and I make indie pop. So I started using TikTok last month and I had a video about my new song go viral and now I want to use TikTok as my main outlet for content creation. But I'm not really sure what to do between musical releases. Like I've made covers and duets but they don't do as well as like the videos of me sitting down and just like talking about the single. I love this question. So content strategy, let's do this together. Are you ready? Yeah. Imagine you and I, we came up with an amazing TikTok strategy. What's the outcome you hope to see in maybe like a year? Where, where do you hope to be? In a year, I'd really like to be at at least 50,000 TikTok followers, but like, I really just want to like make posts that continuously keep people engaged. The one that came out, that was amazing. It was a 2.1 million viewed one, right? Yeah. Why do you think it was so successful? I think it was successful because it was so short because it was 15 seconds and it was funny it was basically me talking about the single and like about how my song i love you but you make me cry is about an onion and so like people thought this was funny and they went and they listened to the song so like those couple of videos of me explaining the song did really well but the other videos that i've been making whether or not they've been like duets or like other videos that i've been making have not been doing as well hmm. why do you think that is i feel like i don't want to consistently be plugging the same song and like i don't want to necessarily bombard people with the same content every time exactly I feel like that this particular piece of content is, is what people find funny. This is what I look at though. Cause you know, you know deep down, you can milk this onion song. You can repost the same thing. I don't even know. Just like, I feel like deep down, you know, you can make the same stuff, just regurgitate it. But you don't really want to, right? Yeah. Like in a in a weird way, there's a key point that you forgot to put in the question, which is how do I create a engaged audience, parentheses, but make something that I like and I genuinely enjoy. Cause the worst thing to do is like creating a strategy where you don't actually want to make it. How often are you posting i was posting three times a day but since that viral video i kind of cut back a little bit because then i was like okay i want to be thinking more so about what i'm posting mm, i disagree yeah i think tiktok tiktok right we're talking about not, not youtube we're not talking about instagram i think tiktok does not reward people for being consistent or over posting it's genuinely the performance of the individual video so tiktok is the only platform where the content that is fed to you is not based if you like if you're necessarily interested or not like i got a lot of memes that i 
I don't like really know or I would search on my own. So the more experimental you get on TikTok, the more you can land on more for you pages and actually create more of an engaged audience. I think honestly, you're overthinking it. I think you have the right subject and idea, like covers might be good, but you might want to experiment next week with the funny trend with a specific audio. I think the key is not to put yourself in a box with TikTok because it's the only platform where putting yourself in a box won't help you in the algorithm because the whole point of the TikTok is to like push you to people that would have never heard of you before. It's very, very general and more widespread. So I think that what I would do is keep posting three times a day or whatever you feel like you can sit on comfortably. And then once you have the next series that pops off, whether it gets a million views or a hundred thousand, you can make a follow-up from that. Okay, should I be hopping on trends or should I try and like stay and stick to what I'm doing? Yeah, hop on trends for sure. Like when you see a trend, do you not do it? A lot of trends have to do with audio. And because I make music, I personally think that like I should be doing something that like has my own audio. Oh, interesting. If you're posting three times a day, make two of them your own audio, but make one of them on a trend. Cause hashtags don't are irrelevant on TikTok, but audios yeah. are really relevant. I have a friend, he's an animator. He makes his own animation cartoons. His name is King Science on TikTok. He has like 10 million on TikTok. So I work with him and I'm like, why the fuck do you use other people's music if you're an artist yourself and you're, you know, you yourself are the creator. And he's like, Jade, I, I want to, you know, for every other post, like I will do that so I can kind of make sure my audience is, you know, similar interest to this other creator or audio that I like. And then I can kind of gravitate towards them towards my page. I actually have been thinking a lot about the TikTok creator fund and I'm wondering if- No, you have any, like, no, like, no, 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 no. <laughs> oh my God. No, I had to pull out of it. King Science, we talked about this with a lot of creators. Everyone's pulling out because it's, it makes sense, right? TikTok is trying to give money to people to post, but there's a limited amount of funds. So they're almost going to limit amount of views to like make sure that they don't, you know, you don't take too much out of their fund pool. It it just hurts you. You will make more revenue through YouTube AdSense. Hell yeah, Jade. Thank you so much. <laughs> Have a good day. I'll talk to you later. Bye, awesome. Athea. You're lovely. Thank you. Bye. Bye. All right, let's go to the next color. All right, it's getting fucking hot outside. If you're so far enjoying this video, you think it's helpful, make sure you give this video a fucking Sorry, that was so aggressive. I'm so sorry. Let's make sure you give this video a thumbs up. It lets me know you like this video. It genuinely helps with the algorithm on YouTube, so I'd really appreciate it and I love you, Darmination. Hello, you're on the Ask Jade Show. What's your name? I'm Nikki. Nikki, where are you from? Bulgaria. Bulgaria, that's so cool. Well, how can I help you yeah. today? Okay, so I have a YouTube channel. It's called Dr. Nikki, and I upload a lot of videos. I have a lot of videos. I have two video oh, wow. editors. Wow. And I have a lot of, I have kind of good results. I, I'm getting around 7,000 views per day right now from search results for from stupid social media how-to videos. <laughs> okay. When they do high-value videos, they tank. When they do stupid how-to videos, they rank. And okay. I want to do something cool with the channel, but I don't know, if you check my channel out, do you have any tips? I don't know what to do, because I'm doing, I did like 90 videos in the last 30 days. Wow. <laughs> So uh, I'm a little bit stressed. You're like, I'm about to literally shut down right now. Jade, please help. <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh. So when you think about YouTube, when you think about search and discovery, the reason why your videos, for example, are, you know, getting, let's just say uh, 20, 50 views is because when you upload a video, typically YouTube puts it first on people that are subscribed to you. Once the people that are subscribed to you see it, then they'll put it on like recommended or browse features, right? So basically yeah. you're re re you are right now relying on your 7,000 subscribers. Those yeah. 7,000 subscribers, maybe they came from a video you don't really like. They came for a certain interest and topic. Your channel is the epitome of topic-centric content. People come to you for a specific topic. If you wanna yeah. fix this, you, you have to switch it. So people come to you for you. People come to you no matter the topic. To be very honest, you would be great. Have you thought about TikTok actually? Cause you're treating YouTube like TikTok right now. TikTok is the perfect platform for topic-centric things. People come to you for the topic. YouTube is better for the personality and the story. I mean, your videos are three minutes long. I would say make it 30 seconds, post it on TikTok and use our YouTube to be more personable and talk about your e-commerce, talk about your store and decrease the frequency. You can start with posting on TikTok and then once you kind of gain an audience, you can ask, hey everybody, ask me a question. And then in your video, you can start to make content around you. And I think you're using YouTube as like a, like almost like a Dropbox dump. That's really, that's probably really offensive. I'm sorry. <laughs> you're probably using... <laughs> Damn. Yeah, you're using YouTube as a place to almost like upload a file, not connect with an audience and like make people interested in you. My idea with YouTube was to create a kind of like a media platform. Like, you know, the Fortnite compilation channel, they would upload multiple times a day, but no one is doing that. 
for shorter videos. So why are you complaining when certain videos pop off that you don't like? If you're t if you're putting your personal interest in it. Because the last I'm, I'm trying to switch to more of a money make business. Money so you're not a media company, right? A media company caters yeah. to what the audience likes. You're a media company plus Nikki company, right? You 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 care about what you make. Because if you told yeah. me, like, I'm going to do what's popular, then you, we wouldn't have this conversation. I think you care. You want to build a BuzzFeed yeah. media company of things you care about. So because of that, you are technically more of a hybrid. So you have to do both. This is what I would say. I think first, you want you, you want to make business videos, scaling, hiring, things that are valuable to you, number one. Number two is you want to build a media company. Now I understand why you're uploading so much. It makes sense to me. If your strength is scaling and you can handle that in a combination with TikTok, I think that you'll be fine. I, I I hate to say it right now, but like it, you need to think about the personal brand first and then the media company because yeah. it's going to frustrate you when you keep running into a wall of like, this doesn't get views, but I care about it. You're not collaborating with anyone other than yourself. And I think you actually are like your quality is good. So take the list of the top 100 people in your industry that you like and either do a collaborated Zoom call, interview, fun piece of content that you like and the topic you like, it will help you. I feel like that's one area that you can improve. This is my last advice though. Yeah. Don't look Look at data, look at what people want. The titles, your titles, and, and the way you're selling people. I'm just looking at like the past five videos all have numbers in it. Yeah. Data won't tell you this, but empathy will. So what I'm telling you, and that's really cringy and like roll of the eyes, but I yeah. think you're gonna see that people are very turned off, not all people. And maybe this is not who you wanna target, but there's a lot of content that's very in your face and out there and like, I'm gonna help you make money quickly. So there's this trend of people feeling a bit like, who do I trust? right so we could be talking in 90 days and you keep doing this and you're like jade i did everything but it didn't work but it's because consumers don't trust new new people that do those same things so what can you do right if there's only like five or six channels that really like almost anchor this kind of clickbait t content title fast moving what can you do different that's the question that's why i keep saying there's a lot of people doing these videos you need to find a platform that doesn't have that yet tiktok doesn't have a lot of this yet or you can focus on personable content that builds trust that's why i keep saying it's it's not about data it's about like look at people people are resistant to watch new channels because they don't know who to trust people are trying to shove products down everyone's throats so just look at that trend and i think that will help you realize that this is not about retention and data it's about oh like maybe the population of the world is turned off by these certain titles what can i do differently dr nikki if you look at that non-obvious thing and you implement a solution to it you're going to start to see the growth right so just look for those like Spend 30 minutes just thinking about those non-obvious things. Bye. Have a great day. All right, guys. That was the Ask Jay show for today. I hope you guys enjoyed. I had so much fun and it was just so cool to talk to y'all. I forget. I literally forget that y'all are not viewers. Y'all are people and I love the Dharma Nation so much. And if you're watching this video right now, you probably don't necessarily want to hear about anything else. But if you want to learn more about me and what I've been up to, I created a course with Oberlo. It's a course around TikTok for business, which I talked a lot about and how to grow on Instagram for business as well. I'm out of energy right now because I had like two coffees and then I had three live streams, but I am so excited to launch this course because this is not the shit that I put out to make money at all. This is the shit that I, I compiled and learned and I want to give to you guys a place where it doesn't break the bank. Like I don't believe you should pay fucking $5 million for a course you can't afford. So I created this with Oberlos to create some affordable options and literally if you can't afford it, please DM me and I'll help you out with the finances. I hope you guys just like take this like this video and just be like, damn, like social media Media is about connecting people, not collecting people. Fucking data analytics won't tell you that what consumers want is authenticity and connection, not just another fucking factor shit. Create a media company, like create whatever the fuck you want, but understand that what you need, if you want to build something great, you have to do something different, especially when you're making content, like be yourself because the algorithm is following what consumers want and what you want. Don't chase the algorithm. It's not going to fucking want you. Okay. So <laughs> I hope you guys enjoyed this video and it taught you a thing or two about being true to yourself, whether it's being politically outspoken, being more yourself, just making content you fucking love. Money will come after you put in the dedication and research and like just dedication to being yourself and looking at trends. Like I definitely think there's nothing wrong with following trends as long as you fuck with it, as long as you vibe with it. So if you want to learn more about TikTok and marketing and Instagram or just see more of this fucking face, I have a whole course step-by-step -step on how I grow pages at my company and I will hopefully help you guys out in your journey. Thank you guys for watching. I love you all. Mwah.